Hey, what's up guys? Jake Whip here back for another video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use depth of field inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Now this is using the fastest method that you can do inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion and most computers will be able to handle this. All of this stuff will be achievable in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So here on my timeline as you can see I have a Fusion clip and if I pause it uh, anywhere here and just full screen it, as you can see it has like a nice depth of field going on. Uh, this is a good frame to see that and the depth of field follows the cursor, so the cursor is always in focus. And this is extremely easy to do. So let's jump right into DaVinci, and I'm just gonna drag down my fusion clip, just like that, okay? And now I will jump in and edit this one. So how we're gonna do this is take down an image plane, uh, we're gonna grab a merge, a camera, and a render 3D. Then if I hook all these up, the image into the merge, camera into the merge and merge into the render then the render into the media out just like that and then the media in one into the image plane now let's view this over here and just a few settings that I like to do to make these videos click on the image plane uh, come over to the size or the transform bring the scale all the way up and then do negative 90 on the X okay so that's just gonna give us a nice uh, flat surface go into the camera then go to the transform then hit use target now if I just drag the camera back, as you can see, it'll have this target that the camera will always face. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my composition and then just move the target up to the top here. I don't want it all the way um, at the effects library uh, tab up here um, where my cursor is, but I want it kind of close. Then I'll just grab my camera and drag this up. Alright, move this off to the side a little bit, something kind of cool like that. Then in the camera, come through and add keyframes on all of the transform values that we are going to be animating. I'm going to come right to when I uh, click this tra uh, transition and drag it out. Then I'm just going to bring it down. So it kind of points at that. And then I'm going to have my camera rotate around. I'm going to copy the thing that I did in the beginning of this video. My example. So there we go. We can just do something like that. And then I'm going to come forward a little bit, and I want this to be a little bit wider, so I'm just going to drag this out. I'm going to zoom it up, do something kind of like this. don't want it to look like it zooms in at all here, so I'm just going to uh, drag this out, make the path a little smoother. Alright, so now at this keyframe, um, I'm just going to come all the way to the end here, and I'm going to drag my target out and off to the side. There we go and then I'll move the camera in. So I like something like that. Then I'm gonna go up to the spline, drag my camera over and do zoom to fill and I'll select them all. I'll just select them all and hit S on my key keyboard. As you can see, that's gonna smooth all of the animations out. So I notice on this frame right here, um, it's coming off the screen a little too much so I'm just gonna drag the target just to adjust that. And then to make this look better, we're gonna get a background node and we'll just set this to the color um, of DaVinci Resolve right there, uh, the darker one. So that's what it'll look like. And now we're going to start moving on to the depth of field. So traditionally you just take the render 3D and then go to OpenGL Render and then come down to Accumulation Effects and enable those. And this is very heavy on your PC. So how you adjust this would be coming into the camera and you come over to the camera settings, do Control Visibility and then Focal Plane. So that's whatever is being focused on. So then you just adjust the focal plane down. And since it's so laggy, it's hard to get the focus uh, on just right. And then you'd have to come into the render and you can adjust the quality and the amount of depth blur. And if you bring the quality up to something usable, it'll become even slower to use. So I'm just gonna undo all of this back to when it says software render. And I'm gonna come down to the output channels and do Z. So now if I view the render, um, as you can see down in the bottom left down here, um, you can see it has a Z position. If I were to just view like a background, it doesn't show that uh, because it doesn't have the uh, Z depth. And if I come back farther, as you can see, that'll increase because that's farther away. And so now if we grab the depth blur node, this will be able to take that Z depth data and use it to simulate depth of field. So now I'll just come to the beginning of my clip here. I will bring the blur size all the way up. And then I'm going to bring the Z scale down just a little bit, okay? And this, I know that this is going to be set to around like 6. 
So now I actually have to view the depth of field, and as you can see, it's starting to uh, attempt to do it a little bit. And now I just got to bring the Z scale down to something that works. So I'm going to do something like that. And I'm also going to go to the last frame here, or somewhere around here, when there's more in the shot. So that it's easier to see how blurry stuff will be. And I think that's pretty good. So now I'll just come to the beginning and I will add a keyframe on the focal point and use the sample to get it to where my cursor is. Then I'll just come through here and every now and then I will um, re-put the focal point on my cursor just so it looks like it follows it. So this might take a little while, but in the end it'll look great. This method is a lot easier than going through and having to adjust the focal plane because you can't just use an eyedropper uh, to do that. All right, and now as you see, this is playing back pretty fast. It's going at about uh, down to the bottom five frames a second, and this is without caching at all. So that's a lot better than the point some frames a second that you would be getting with the render 3D depth of field. All right, so now I'm gonna come to the edit page, and as you can see, there is this nice uh, red line coming up, and once that turns blue, this will be ready for playback, just like the last one, and it'll play back seamlessly, just like it's a normal clip. So let's just wait for that to load. All right, so now as you can see, uh, this is fully rendered and it is looking nice. The focal point follows the cursor wherever it goes, and if you guys wanted, you could go through and add more keyframes just to get it so it's a little uh, more finely tuned. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, please like the video and comment down below if you guys have any things that you would like to learn. Uh, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and I'll see you guys next time for another video.